Welcome to the latest episode of our weekly Seafood News Roundup, brought to you by Erner Berry's Comtel. I'm your host and SeafoodNews.com editor, Michael Ramsing, and it's almost Christmas, people. Erner Berry held its first annual Ugly Christmas Sweater Contest this week, and Santa's made an early visit to our offices. Thanks a lot to uh, Santa for my order of uh, jelly beans and a, and a Batman, Batman mug. So, you know, Merry Christmas, Santa. I really appreciate that. As for today's show, there's been plenty of news reported out of the seafood industry ahead of the holiday. And we start today's decline with the U.S. Department of Justice, where a second guilty plea has been entered over a conspiracy to fix the price of canned tuna in the market. Bumblebee sales executive Kenneth Warsham became the company's second sales executive to plead guilty for participating in a scheme to fix the price of canned Tuna. According to the charge, Worsham and unnamed co-conspirators discussed the prices of packaged seafood sold in the United States and agreed to fix the prices of those products. Earlier this month, Walter Scott Cameron pled guilty to the same conspiracy charge. Both of the executives agreed to pay a criminal fine and cooperate with the division's ongoing investigation. So far, Worsham and Cameron are the only named co-conspirators in the case. In other news, Indian shrimp producers and exporters are reporting some production problems in November and December from a rash of weather-induced disease. However, exporters said the disease issues are a seasonal problem and that the production setback is only temporary. A look at U.S. shrimp imports through October it shows no slowdown in shipments from India through 10 months. In fact, India set an all-time high for shrimp imported to the U.S. market for the month of October. Meanwhile, the Chinese embassy confirmed to the Canadian Food Inspections Agency that they are not accepting any live Dungeness crab from the U.S. portion of fishing waters in Area 67, which covers the west coast from Northern California to Alaska. This is the second time China has shut down exports of live Dungeness crab from California this year, but this is the first time the ban includes the entire U.S. West Coast. Some industry observers think the ban was precipitated by Canadian shippers who mixed in some California crab with shipments from other areas. Whatever the cause, Canadian officials have informed U.S. shippers that it will no longer issue certificates for live crab from the U.S. to be exported to China. Much of this crab is shipped to, through the air through Vancouver, B.C. And with just days before Christmas, lobster dealers in Nova Scotia are reporting some of the worst weather to hit the major fishing areas 33 and 34 in 35 years. The deadly combination of lower landings, high process inventory, and mediocre lobster quality have made accessing good, shippable live lobsters for overseas export particularly challenging this year. So far, Nova Scotia's lobstermen have fished just about half of their days since the season opened in late November. Traders are telling Erner Barry that prices at the docks and in live wholesale markets are on the rise as the industry moves into the new year. Subscribers to SeafoodNews.com get all of these stories and more every day. As for today's top story, SeafoodNews.com commented on an expose published in Bloomberg Business Week that smeared the imported shrimp industry and pushed for the USDA to take over inspection duties for shrimp, similar to the catfish program. The authors of the article took a series of health problems and weaponized them against shrimp, whether they were factual, true, or even about the shrimp industry in the first place. The article also called into question most of Asian aquaculture production, as the claims it made applied not just to shrimp, but to any pond, cage rays, or estuary cultivated seafood. The Southern Shrimp Alliance, a group that represents the domestic shrimp industry, was a source of Bloomberg's story. The Alliance's executive director was a critical of Seafood News in a letter to the editor, which also published this, which we pu published this week. And that concludes our report, which was presented today by Erner Berry's Comtel. Gain access to the wholesale seafood industry's top platform for market quotations, news, and expert commentary. Traders in the wholesale seafood market make a better business decision every day when they use Erner Berry's Comtel. Remember, you can always tell us how we're doing on Twitter by tweeting at us at Seafoodcom News and at UB Seafood. And you can like Erner Berry and Seafood News on Facebook to learn more about what we're up to. You can also listen to Erner Berry on your mobile device through our Market Digest and Seafood News podcast series. Our latest podcast talks about the in how the industry expects mahi to come off menus in 2017. You should check it out. For Inner Berry and Seafood News, I'm Michael Ramsing. Thanks for watching. Have a Merry Christmas, and we'll talk to you all next week.